Now, Nintendo recently filed a patent for Game Boy emulation, which would allow folks to have the Game Boy experience on devices that range from their mobile phones all the way to the displays on the backs of the seats in front of them on trains and airplanes. Cool, right? Wait, hold on a minute, Linus. What exactly is emulation? Are they gonna cut open all those seats and stuff Game Boys inside? Where will they get so many Game Boys? Are they gonna try to take mine? No, whoa, hold on, slow down there, Turbo. They don't need actual Game Boys. In fact, that's exactly the point of an emulator, to use software combined with high-speed or specialized hardware to effectively fake the functionality of another piece of hardware for the purpose of running or debugging programs. So that Game Boy emulator is just a software program that runs on hardware that is nothing like an actual Game Boy, but is able to imitate its functionality so the game software itself never knows it's not running on a real Game Boy. Neat, hey? Yeah, Linus, that sounds super awesome. So can I emulate the Titan supercomputer on like my phone and run complex weather simulations in my pocket? No, uh, even with intimate knowledge of how a device and the software it runs works, the non-specialized processing power required to fake a given functionality purely in software, especially one for which highly specialized purpose-built hardware has been developed, is often an order of magnitude greater than the original or more. And in many cases, especially where emulation is being used to preserve the gaming experiences of old games or software that wouldn't otherwise run on modern computers, a fair bit of brute forcing it is required to achieve sufficient performance. Okay, Linus, sweet then, so I can run like Odell Lake on my Alienware. Riveting, I'm glad you made a video about this. Actually, emulation is not just for old stuff. It's often used in the design of future products as well. One of my favorite examples of this is the recurring scandal of, oh my goodness, the game console maker X was using a PC to run their demos at video game convention Y. Well, of course they were. It's called a development kit. Imagine a world where a new game console came out and then you had to wait the typical two to three years that a AAA game takes before you could actually play anything on it. Programmers use dev kits, often developed internally, to write code for systems that aren't actually finished being designed yet, so that once the hardware is finalized, there's already software for it. And programmable hardware like a modern video game console is just one example of this. It can be even more useful in the design of specialized hardware called an embedded system, where the the hardware and software need to work tightly together to reduce power consumption and design complexity, keeping costs low. Emulation of the hardware allows faster testing of software, which allows faster refinement of the hardware, multiple cycles of which can occur without ever actually physically manufacturing anything. Efficient, right? So there you have it. Emulation has the advantages of flexibility, potentially improved functionality, anti-aliasing add-ons for PlayStation 1 games, anyone? And when done well, lower hardware costs, but with the drawbacks of sometimes imperfect compatibility and usually much higher processing power requirements. Speaking of power requirements, Cooler Master is our sponsor for today. They make cases, fans, all-in-one liquid coolers, air coolers, peripherals like that Novatouch TKL that people keep asking about in the videos over on my other channel, Lines Tech Tips, and of course, great quality power supplies. If you were interested in something like a holiday gift for the geek in your life, maybe give them a little prod. Hey, dog, you know, is your CPU running a little bit too hot? You need a new power supply for that new graphics card that you asked? your grandma for well you know maybe we could arrange for you to you know get the whole bundle and have like a great cooler master pc um yes i don't know nick's notes in here are terrible nick your notes on the the video integration are terrible but the last couple things that are in there is that the netton 240m which is a cooler that we actually checked out recently on the linus tech tips channel is a great value for someone looking for an all-in-one liquid cooler for their cpu and if you're not necessarily looking to buy something but you just enjoy learning i mean you're watching fast as possible so you probably do then you can check out their cooler master university site which will be linked in the video description where they've got some cool information about cool things like coolers. Thanks for watching guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you thought that my cool joke was not very cool. Just awful. Or if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possible episodes just like this one.